watch today. Getting into the Invictus 20. A Border Guard veteran became a participant of the Ukrainian national team in Invictus Games. Some distracted attention as others involved magnetic forces. What trick did inventive cigarette traffickers pull? Handcuffs in a candy box. What surprises await indiscriminate guest workers? Swampy ghosts. How smugglers tried to overcome a swamp. Stadiums applauded them. World leaders are honored to greet each of them. The Invictus Games, an international competition for wounded war veterans, was founded by the foundation of Britain's Prince Harry. For five years, this member of the royal family and professional serviceman has been the main thought leader of the competition, and its participants continue to inspire millions of the planet's inhabitants. They prove every time that an unbreakable spirit is stronger than circumstances. The final qualifiers for the national team at the 2020 Invictus Games were held in Kyiv recently. This time The Hague and the Netherlands will host veterans. Symbolically, this city is usually associated with the tribunal where the bloodiest war criminals were judged. Over 200 athletes will, for the third time, be representing Ukraine. Our border guard hero is also in the Invictus 20. He smiles all the time and radiates optimism. Meet Rustam Rosul, resident of the village of Mukachuva in Transcarpathia. In 2014, serving as a soldier of the CHOP border squad, he was injured near Volnavacha in Donetsk region. A column of cars was attacked by militants. Covering his comrade in arms, it was a miracle that Rustam survived. But a spine fracture and numerous injuries caused by shrapnel left him with little chance. We accompanied the cargo to the unit and came under fire. This was followed by surgery and eight months in hospital. There was one month in a coma, a series of complicated surgeries and the verdict of doctors. Hopes for recovery were poor. But he's not one to get discouraged. With the support of volunteers, the serviceman underwent a course of rehabilitation in the United States and, on returning home, got actively engaged in sports. Now he puts the shot, throws the disc and shoots from a bow. He works hard in the gym and stadium six days a week. After returning from America, I visited the gym three times a week and stadium three times a week. Belief in his own strength and the support of people who care helped him return to an active life. And though he is still wheelchair-bound, Lustam believes this will not be forever. I continue to train. Feeling in the legs is gradually being restored. Well, not so much. Maybe it will take a couple of years for me to walk. The upcoming Invictus Games is another step in his recovery, and rest assured, Rustam will overcome it successfully. In English, there's the term red herring, but such fish do not exist. The fact is that hunting was very popular in Britain in the early 19th century. The aristocracy of the Victorian era took the training of hounds very seriously. The British used smoke herring to teach young dogs not to foil the scent of the game. The fish had a red color and a strong smell. It served as a distraction. It is unlikely that Bukovina traffickers knew the methods by which British puppies are trained, but they used red herring tactics. On the way to the border with Romania, some green berets caught a group of smugglers red-handed. However, the 12 boxes they had were empty. 
That's it. Do you think the smugglers mistakenly grabbed empty boxes? No. This imitation of smuggling was no accident. Participants of this show acted as red herrings so as to distract, and another group of offenders was working nearby at this time. They were carrying as many as 20,000 packets of cigarettes worth 600,000 rivnias. But the Green Berets also detained them, and their brilliant plan failed. While in Bukovina, cigarette traffickers put on a show, their Transcarpathian colleagues decided to go to ground. They attached boxes of cigarettes to the train cars with powerful magnets. The train went to Hungary, but 750 packets of magnetic cigarettes remained in Ukraine. Watch next. Handcuffs in a candy box. What surprises await indiscriminate guest workers? Swampy Ghosts – How Smugglers Tried to Overcome a Swamp The grass is always greener on the other side. This famous saying is most likely invented by guest workers. But they know that paradise overseas is possible. But most don't learn from the mistakes of others. Problems? We'll think about them tomorrow. Such people are a real find for the underworld. In southern Ukraine, some smart guys recruited unemployed sailors. The job was simple – to ship guest workers to the EU. Of course, illegally, for the right money. Operatives of the Azov Black Sea Regional Department received information that a criminal group involved Ukrainian citizens in drug and human trafficking on the territory of Mykolaiv and Kherson oblasts. It's hard to believe, but an entire criminal syndicate worked in Ukraine. Traffickers built yachts like this for transporting migrants. Other craftsmen forged documents. And the sole catchers were selecting staff. Work was in full swing. The route led to Turkey by sea. From 30 to 50 migrants and drugs were packed into vessels that were shipped to the EU where the live goods were anticipated. That's if they're lucky and don't get caught. Of course, the sailors were not told about criminal responsibility and they were not interested in it. And in vain. Ignorance does not save one from handcuffs. About 300 Ukrainians who were imprisoned in Greece can confirm this. One of those vessels was recently detained by border guards in unison with the police and prosecutors. The Dozor Special Forces Unit and the Naval Special Operations Division provided force support for the operation. They also searched for persons involved in the case. The result was striking. Lots of fake documents, drugs and other evidence of the activities of transgressors. More than enough of it. Professional racers don't imagine their lives without adrenaline. Someone takes part in racing and someone else adores extreme. The Sahara sands, swampy forests, mountain roads are places where one can rack one's nerves and console any vanity. Athletes do this because of drive. Smugglers are a different story. The main thing here is the money. The other day, near the village of Poznia of Sumy Oblast, border guards met such a fan of all things extreme. The driver of a UAZ-452 had just come from Russia. But seeing the officers, he left his car in the woods and ran like mad. It's easy to guess what words were aimed at the Green Berets. His car was full of building materials and electrical goods, and some perfumes. As it turned out, the smuggler had a certain route. The day before, his three associates had tried to pave the way for him through a local swamp with the help of planks. The border guard unit who visited the workers out of the blue halted construction. Investigators are working on identifying all those involved in the case, and the cargo was seized by the Fiscal Service, which now has it.